me tell you about my hometown, Portland, Oregon. I won't have to brag a bit, no need to exaggerate. P-O-R-T-L-A-N-D, Portland, Portland, Kissin's hometown. Portland, Portland, Kissin's hometown. Welcome to City Light Show. I'm your host tonight, Jefferson Kincaid, and with us in the studio, we have some very special people. They're here. They are the good guys. Uh, Kissin started May 1st, 1959. Uh, it was another radio station before that, uh, KVAN. And, uh, and that was very colorful. And that was colorful, too. Yes, Willie Nelson worked there, among other uh, DJs, and it was pop music at the very, very end, though it did play country music uh, uh, a couple of years before uh, uh, Don Burton, who bought KVAN, and it became KISN. And he was a very colorful character. He was a very colorful character, not only in Portland, but also uh, uh, out of Omaha and uh, in Indianapolis, where he owned radio stations uh, uh, WIFE and Coil in Omaha, and then he came to Portland and bought KVAN. When KVAN began in 1939, it was a Vancouver radio station, and it was uh, Don Burden that brought the studios from Vancouver to Portland uh, on 10th and Burnside. Uh, he just, uh, uh, he came up with these winning situations. A great promoter. Yeah. 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 And uh, that's, that's what helps to make Top 40 uh, very strong is solid promotion and he was a master at that. He was always doing something. Well, one promotion would uh, stop, uh, you know, they'd end and they'd have the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. There's always something going on at Kissing. Yeah. So, or, so we're going to recreate yeah. all that yeah. with, a, with a new Kissing. <laughs> at one time there were seven different KISN disc jockeys on the air in Los Angeles. They were so popular they could get jobs. They'd go to Seattle, Chicago, LA, uh, there were a group of us down there. It was almost like old home week. Yeah, but real, radio, real Don Steel. Real Don Steel was one <laughs> yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Emperor Extremely. of North America. Right. I love that. <laughs> but if you go back through the string of DJs, yeah. you know, Tom Murphy to Johnny Williams, etc., different eras, different audiences, yeah. all of which uh, have grown older now. And uh, hopefully some are older than we are. But here we are, same voices, <laughs> same jingles, the whole thing. And, of course, our focus really is the music. Absolutely. Yeah. And if the yeah. voices bring back a touch of nostalgia, that's fine. But otherwise, it's really going to be music-centered. Uh, yeah. Cool. Now 50s, 60s, goal. 70s, big mixture right. of all the music. That is the goal of the new Kissing, is to kind of recreate the feel of the old one. Not, we're not going to be able to do it exactly. Right. Because, well, we, yeah. you know, we don't have the, the promotions and, the, and all of the commercial uh, aspects of it. But we're going to try and recreate it as best we can uh, because that's what people love. And, and when the stream was on uh, and when it went off on Facebook, it just exploded. What happened? So there's a lot of people yeah, out there that want to hear it. Somewhere along the line, you have to find people that are still enthused. And each of us has our limits. Uh, getting a little older, we're not looking for jobs. We just love recreating what we did, do it all over again. People enjoy it, and there will be new people who just love the 50s. That's sure. their world, and my goodness, they can live in it again. You can visit the past. Can't live there, but you can sure visit. 
It must have been so wonderful, though, I mean, like, to be hearing some of the new releases. Uh, most people listened in Portland to Kiss them because it was the in station to listen to, and there wasn't a lot of other stations around to listen. There were a few, but not like today. There, You have so many options, and there's never going to be a time like that again yeah. where you've got a group, basically, you could go to school, and everybody knew what was going on. It was the same thing on television. <laughs> we only had three networks, you right, know? And we right. had just AM radio. Yeah. And in your car, that's all you had. And, and then everybody was listening to the same music, and they were all into it. It was it was quite a time. Now you go to school and everybody's into their own little thing, you know. And I remember the greatest thing was a transistor radio that was yeah. about the size of a cigarette pack that you, everybody had them in their shirt pockets with their earphones in, going to school and class and stuff, just like they do now with the cell phones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or listening to the radio at night, uh, right. uh, transistor under your pillow, under the covers, yeah. you know. <laughs> Kids would uh, actually, uh, and the story was told me in Hood River, they would uh, get money from dad to go to the movies, but they'd spend it on gas so they could drive to Portland and drive around the Kissing Corner, maybe get out and say, would you play this? And that was on Burnside? Tim, Tim Burnside. Tim Burnside. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's, a, there's a picture of it here right behind Craig. It was actually a window on the corner of Burnside and 10th Avenue. So the DJs would be inside the studio behind that glass, and people would wave to them. They could see each other and back and forth. They'd hold up signs and do all kinds of things. In fact, Dave Stone uh, was on the air one night, and this beautiful blonde drives by the window, and he gets on the microphone, and he says, that's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Come back. Turns out he marries her. Wow. <laughs> so now, it, should, it should also be said that when uh, he's, he's, he's exactly right. People would come in for the coast just to listen to Kiss. Now, the reason was, this was back in the early 60s uh, when, when he was on, on when Roger was on, uh, that it was, the reason is because that the power was a lot lower. Mm. It was only 1,000 watts. Okay. And they, they raised the power in, uh, in 1966 to 5,000 watts. And then it, it went out further. But there was a time when Kissing was so, uh, uh, such a, a, a thing to listen to, but yet the outlying areas would hear about it and yeah. they couldn't hear it at night. Because when the sun went down, it, it was directional. Like it only uh, went on certain directions. And if you weren't, uh, if yeah. your house wasn't sitting in a particular area, you couldn't hear it, uh, or, or community for that matter. Wow. And so they would drive in and they would circle around Portland so they could hear it for a few hours and then head back to wherever they were. I, when you were talking about kids driving around the block, when I was there, I think we had 110 times was a record wow. people driving around. <laughs> kids would drive around and around. Yeah. Then the jock would mention something about him on the air. And right. Now, when did you start with them? I started in 1987. Uh, it was the second incarnation of Kiss, and there's been a number of them. Uh, uh, and uh, at that time, it was KKSN, uh, and uh, it started over again in 1980 and went through some format changes, and then they decided to go into oldies in, in, in August 1st, 1987. I joined in October, and then we started a simulcast, in February 1988 on 97.1. Boy, it gets, yeah. it gets complex. Yeah. And what about some of the political history of it? Yeah. But you yes. were here even earlier than that. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yes. Real early, in the almost the beginning, 1962, I joined the good guy uh, staff uh, in a very colorful time, the early 60s, uh, when really Top 40 radio was virtually being invented so we well you guys lines. were part of that you were clearly part of that yes absolutely yeah. and you and you became extremely popular yeah we did kissin owned the city frankly uh, the, if you mentioned kissin any involvement was uh, was fantastic and of course radio everywhere in the country ruled wherever they were radio was so important to reach and influence anybody but especially the kids who were into their new top 40, top 50 rock and roll. And that was, and you knew a little bit about rock and roll, obviously from being a DJ, but also you had something to do with some other bands at that time. Uh, I did. Well, what radio does for you, it introduces you to people. Radio was very important to the artists, all of them, because without radio, they'd have no hits. We essentially made the hits, and now, of course, we're... Uh, remaking them or reminding folks what they were but I had opportunity over the years to get to know some of these 
you know, well, we were all young. I was going to say youngsters, <laughs> but weren't we all at the time? And, uh, you know, traveled with them and then became Paul Ritter involved. And the Raiders. Right. Well, I found Paul, who was a cook at a mental institute. Uh, he needed help, and I thought this is fascinating. I became the manager, put him in the studio. And within two years, we had our own network TV series with Dick Clark. But all of this, of course, grows out of radio. That's the beginnings of almost everything. That's where Dick Clark came from. And you? I uh, worked there on the uh, request line for about a year and a half. Bugged them so much, I wanted to be on the air. So then I got to work Saturday nights. And wow. I worked Saturday nights when I was in high school. I worked as a, uh, when I was a senior in high school. So, uh, But it was great. We had records in those days, you know, the little 45s you'd play. So, and the new Kissin, that's going to be on 24-7. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. That's a lot of work. And that's a lot of volunteer work, too. It is. We're all, everybody here is a volunteer. These guys, you know, veteran broadcasters, uh, they could probably get a job in any market in the country, but... Uh, they're volunteering their time to bring Kissin back just because it's it's something that's deep within us, you know. We love that radio station. When Kissin went on the air in 1959, I was 10 years old. So you you clearly remember it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was born and raised in Portland, so okay. I grew up with Kissin, as, as did yeah. these guys. I remember listening to it in the uh, mid-60s when I was in grade school. And I remember in the backyard, it was a real hot day, listening on the transistor radio. And Tom Michaels and Bobby Noonan were on. They were talking about this Kissin' pool party. Remember the pool party they used to have on the air? I thought it was a real yeah. pool party. <laughs> and I kept thinking, yeah. why aren't they giving the address out for this place? Well, Where is this pool party? You'd hear in the background, they'd have a tape, and they'd be running, and you could hear people splashing. And okay. so, I mean, you know, diving hey, board. Yeah, it had to be exactly. real. <laughs> I was thinking, I want to go to this. Yeah. Right. Very creative. Well, it is. Well, that's one of the beautiful things about radio itself, because it, there's an element of imagination that, that you can play. I always love like stories on radio too. You Theater know? of the mind. Right. Yeah. You were talking about actually physically playing discs on turntables. That there is a video that kind of chronicles the history of KISN. And it starts off with uh, Dave Record Stone signing off the Kissin uh, and he's station in 1970. 76. September second, right. September second, and he's the yeah. one that's got over a hundred thousand albums or something. No, oh, that's that, another guy. That's, 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 that's Dirty man. Dave. Dirty Dave, the record slave, and is he, he, on he the is an amazing that, guy. That... He'll be in the video. Yeah. The time is twelve o'clock midnight at KISN Vancouver. At this time, Kissin leaves the air for an indefinite period of time, by order of the Federal Communications Commission. We wish to express our thanks to the thousands and thousands of listeners who have enjoyed and depended on KISN over the past 17 years. Good night from the Kissin' Good Guys. KISN, Vancouver. On September 2nd, 1976, that sound broke the hearts of Kissin' listeners everywhere. Hi, I'm Roger Hart, once upon a time a Kissin' Good Guy. Many of you grew up listening to Kissin' Radio, the most popular radio station of its time in Portland and Vancouver. When Kissin' Radio went off the air, the loss would leave a black hole in Portland Radio for the next 12 years. Kissin' 91 and John O'Brien sending a message out to you this morning that if you want to hear something, call me on the brand new request line at 733-5576. 733 Kissin. Then a new generation of Kissin listeners was born when the oldie station returned to the original 910 position on the AM dial and at 97.1 FM in 1987. For another 17 years, Portland had their favorite radio station back. Until. 971 Charlie FM, KYCHFM, KYCHFM HD1, Portland. What? Kissin' was gone again. This time, we thought for good. Radio executives thought that the oldies came from the 80s and 90s. Nowhere on the Portland radio dial could you find the real roots of rock and roll. Well, I'm gonna write a little letter, I'm gonna mail it to my local DJ. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Let's go. 
90 Wonderful Kissing, playing all those great records your mother threw out. Have this dance? Ooh, a lively tune. I'm inspired to dance. All the songs you can still dance to are on one radio station. More music, more often. Exactly, that's exactly what I mean. From the largest record library in the world. Now, there must be an explanation for this phenomenon. Testing, testing. Holy, holy cow, we're on the radio. Dave Records in the Stone Cave amongst 91,000 records owned by Dirty Dave, the record slave. Then in 2012, Kissin' returned once again from this very studio as goodguyradio.com. We weren't on the air, but we covered the world as an internet radio station, streaming the beloved sound of KISN to every computer on the planet. Welcome, everybody, to Real Oldies Radio. Good Guy Radio was the brainchild of Dave Record Stone and another Dave, Dirty Dave the Record Slave. We're here in his basement studio, surrounded by thousands of 45s that provide the music for the internet station, goodguyradio.com. Thank you, Roger. Dirty Dave here, your program director of Kissin' Radio. Like many of you, I listened to Kissin' Radio my whole entire life. Born and raised right here in Portland, we like to try to recreate that great sound, all the uh, great music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the Kissin' jingles. As you can see behind me here, we have just a very small portion of my record collection. We have over 91,000 records. We're going to do the 50s, like this one. Love Elvis Presley's Loving You. How about Paul Rea and the Raiders? Remember Just Like Me and Kicks? We're going to be playing that one, too. And we're going to go up in the 70s, also. ABBA from Sweden and their greatest hits. We're going to play them all right here on GoodGuyRadio.com. The good guys got together and reimagined a brand new KISN radio. This time it'll become your real oldies radio. The new Kissin' is nonprofit, a listener supported community radio station. And get this instead of only an internet stream, we're adding a new FM radio station to the Portland Airwaves. That's right, Kissin' will be back on the air at 95.1 FM thanks to the Western Oregon Radio Club. It won't reach everyone, but if you're in the neighborhood, you can listen too. With me in the studio is Ken Seymour, the good guy who's making the FM station a real possibility. Ken, tell us about Kissin' FM. Recently, the FCC granted the Western Oregon Radio Club, a local amateur radio organization, permission to build a low-power FM station with the call letters KISN. That's right. After 38 years, we're bringing Kissin' back to Portland's airwaves. Our ace chief engineer, Reiner Johnson, is standing by ready to modulate the Kissin' Klystron on 95-point wonderful. Chief Michael McKay! Solid rock. Hi, it's Steve Michael McKay. I was here 1971 to 74 as a Kissin' Good Guy. You know what's great? It's bad. The Kissin' Good Guys are bad. Rock and roll music, enjoying the life and the sounds of the things that we went through when we were teenagers and older. Craig Adams, great oldies all the time. K-I-S-N. Hi, I'm Craig Adams. Kissin' Good Guy. 1987 to 2005, second generation, and we are bringing Kissin' back on the radio and on the web. Let's do it. And I'll be here too with Dirty Dave the Record Slave and all the Kissin' good guys you remember. Tiger Tom Murphy, Pat Patty, Dave Stone, Craig Adams, and other familiar DJ voices. All who've worked hard to bring us back. 
I'll be at events around the Portland area along with our Kissin' Street team of DJs as well. Remember, Kissin' is everywhere. Thanks, good guys, and keep on kissin'. Yeah. <laughs> we can't get, wait to get back on the air, and it will be very, very soon. I am excited because it's going to take us back to our youth and inexperience, all the music we grew up with, and that's going to be fun. Thank you for having us back. You don't suppose I could grow hair again. <laughs> <The song is, laughs> uh, my. Kissing Radio is coming back, and we're proud to be able to bring it back. We think uh, it's been gone too long in Portland, so... Oh, yeah. Watch the back. Thank right. you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having you guys. Let me tell you about my hometown, Portland, Oregon. I won't have to brag a bit, no need to exaggerate. P O R T L A N D. Portland, Portland, Kissin's hometown. Portland, Portland, Kissin's hometown.